up. I'll probably just do this. Riley, sit. Sit. Nothing. Nothing, Riley. Heel. Sit. Beautiful job, Rye. Ah, oh, so you don't care anymore. Riley's no longer gun shy. See this video, you can really see Riley's body language and tell that she's having a good time, that she's no longer responding negatively to the gunshot. Now, I've been working with Riley for about two or three days, something like that, a couple days, that's all, and we already have her to the point where this is the video where she, she's like saying she doesn't care. Look at the dog's tail, it's up and wagging. This two days ago is when I would shoot the gun, that she would be shaking uncontrollably. Now she's not shaking anymore. The tail is up and it's wagging, she's having a good time. I didn't videotape the very first session for a reason because people, it's like explo exploitation in a way and it'll bump people out. You know, like, oh look, the dog's afraid. Yeah, I know that, I know that. But to get the dog unafraid, it has to do a session or two where it's not as, you know, it just doesn't get what's going on. But they pick it up very quickly. If you do nothing, every time your dog hears a fire, fireworks or something, it freaks out. Now Riley can move on and act like a normal dog when she hears fireworks. Or she's around gunfire, whatever. We're going to have, we're going to uh, test Riley out with a shotgun. Probably not tomorrow, but the next day. She'll do it. I saw this, I saw the light bulb go off today. Watch this video. Watch, look at Riley's body language. Once you start getting success with your gun shy dog, and they start associating this with gunpowder, just start running the dog through, uh, you know, drills, obedience drills, of things that you know the dog can do. Fire the gun, make the dog sit. Fire the gun, make the dog go in the down position. Whatever. It's something that you know that you can build on, build on success. It's easy for the dog, the dog's functioning, it's doing what it's told. And every time you do this, and when you start doing this, you're gonna notice every time you do a session and you tell the dog not to be freaked out, they get better. They do. They get better at every session. So take your time, just do whatever. Like with Riley, Riley, no, Riley knows that we're gonna uh, be training and she knows that I'm incorporating the, the starter pistol at this point. Riley, sit. Good girl. What were we doing? Ike, get over here at heel. Come on, Ike, heel. Come on, spin around, fat man. All right, get over here. No, sit. Ike, sit. So it could just be so, something like this. Like, so they're sitting, right? Riley, this is about Riley, not Ike. Right? Riley, heel. Sit. That's fucking awesome. That's awesome. Okay, now I just, in Riley, I just saw like no over, not, not being overexcited, nothing. She just looked totally normal. This is like in three days. So at this point, I probably won't use the glove. I'll probably just do this. Riley, sit. Sit. Nothing. Nothing, Riley, heel. Sit. Beautiful job, Rye. Ah, oh, so you don't care anymore. Riley's no longer gun shy. See, I could transfer her into the uh, the dummy launcher, but we should probably work on retrieves with her and do this do this some more, of course. You know, you really want to put the nail in the coffin. Maybe we have time that I could break out a like 16 gauge or something. She's doing great. That's great, Riley. Nice job. We'll do this one more time in the glove. Right? One more time out of the glove. Riley, heel. Notice her tail's up. Her tail's up. Yeah, I feel good about this. Sit. Good girl, Riley. Heel. Sit. Nice. You don't care. Yay. Yay. Good girl. Yeah, there you go. See the tail wagon? Good girl. Good girl. That's good. Riley, sit. Thank you, Ike. Heel. It's awesome. It's fucking awesome, Riley. Good girl. That's awesome. See? She's better. She's a lot better. Yeah, patting myself on the back. You're damn right. I'm, I'm good with gun-shy dogs. I am. There isn't any dog that I can't get 
good with dogs in general. Jupy has gun shyness, and we need him to move past this because we want him to use the dummy launcher, and it's just too much. It's just too exciting. So what I'm going to do is take the dummy launcher without the dummy, put a leather glove over it, and I'm going to have him sit here, and he needs to sit up here. Jupy, get up here, heel. No, get up there, heel. Sit. Get up there. Sit. Jupy, sit. Good, sit. Jupy has gun shyness, and we tried working with the starter pistol with him yesterday, and he still is way too excited. Okay, so I got a leash on him, right? I don't want him to pop up when I shoot the gun. Then I throw the dummy, and then he goes on the retreat, brings it back, we do it again. Real simple. Jupy, sit. Sit. See? We can't have that. Sit. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to run this leather glove by putting it over the dummy launcher to muffle it. And Jupy has to sit on this. We just did this a second ago. And he wouldn't even sit on it when he heard this. It's too much excitement. We need to push him past this so that we can move on. If the dog is super excited like this, showing this type of response, it's not healthy for the dog. So it doesn't matter if we get this done today, tomorrow, or next week, or the next time he's here. But he needs to, you know, act like a big boy. Jupy, sit. Sit. Okay, he's wagging his tail. This is what we need. And we need to keep doing this until... Jupy sees this as something fun. Good boy. We're going to give him positive reinforcement. Good boy. Good boy. Sit. Just needs to sit. No retrieves. retrieves. Retrieves will cause more excitement. We don't want more excitement. There's way too much excitement. Sit. Good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What are you flipping out about, brother? It's nothing. Sit. That's what, this is what we need. Now this, with the glove on it, is about as loud as the starter pistol. A little bit less. So we're not going to even think about taking the glove off. Right? He needs to get used to this. That was a loud one. My ear's ringing. Good. See, it's nothing. I'm going to throw the glove down, which is getting torn up by the blast. Jippy, hold. No, hold. He's never held a glove. Hold. Hold. You got it. Hold. Hold. There you go. Hold. Sit. Drop. I don't think we ever work with the glove with you. Get up there. Sit. See how the glove's getting all torn up? Let's do another one. It's worth it. I like this pair of gloves, but I like Jupy more. Now, I don't have the leash in my hand because he's sort of, res he's, he's responding much better. Okay, so I'm out of them. So we'll come out and do this later. That was successful. It was. That's successful. If your dog's gun shy, you must take your time with this. Don't over... You're going to overwhelm the dog at some point. Just don't do it consistently. If the dog's overwhelmed, back it up. In other words, we were trying to do retrieves yesterday using a starter pistol. Too much. Too much. The retrieve and the dummy launcher, it's too much right now for Jupy. So we just get him acclimated to the sound of the blast. That's it. This will be very helpful for this dog and it's helpful for any dog. And this is something that the owner could use. She's not a hunt. She might do firearm sports, so I know her, her dad does. But this is something anybody can use. It's not just for hunting dogs. It's anytime you want to train the dog to do a longer retrieve, this can be very helpful.
I mean, if you're going to do marked retrieves, this is great. So, Joopy, you did good, dude. That's good, brother. His tail's wagging. So we'll come out here and do this again. Like I said, it's not important that he is doing long retrieves with the dummy launcher this afternoon. It's just important that Joopy is getting better. And we're looking for that ultimate goal of Joopy being able to do the dummy launcher. Now, remember... Don't compare your dog to other dogs. That's a mistake. Micah and Mila, it was easier with because they had had more training. Jupy's gone through a board and train, and I really d didn't start influencing Jupy until he was much older. The, by, by the time I knew Jupy, he was, you know, way over a year old. So, because Micah and Mila it was sort of easier, even Mila was, Mila had gun shyness. I'm going to test Mila to make sure that she doesn't have any sound phobias, that she's gun shy. And the, the reason for this is, well, there's many reasons actually, but one, we want to start using the dummy launcher with her and Ike. Look at who's riding shotgun. That's fucking little Ikey. Say hello. Uh, it's me, it's Ike. And teaching honoring. So, and the other, the other thing is that her family has a place in the country, and I do believe that they do firearm sports. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to have a dog around firearms that you hadn't checked this out with. If you take a dog that's ever been around firearms and you shoot the gun, you know, a lot of times the dog will get so freaked out it takes off running and gets hit by a car or just gets lost. That's how freaked out they are. So one thing that you notice is I'm in a, I'm in a, a yard, a fenced-in yard right now, and even if I wasn't in a fenced-in yard, I'd have some kind of element of control where the dog was tied down. Now, she's back there on a tire, and she has a leash on, and I also have an e-collar on her. I'm using a 22. This is a dummy launcher. It takes a 22 cartridge, and so it's not real loud. We're not even attempting the shotgun yet, so I'm going to do it from way back here, and then I'm going to move up. I got four different cartridges and we'll see how she responds. Now I'm gonna warn her right before I do this, I'm gonna repeat the command, sit, right? Don't move dog. And then she'll start, you know, we'll, we'll use this and, and we'll just start working our way up. There's nothing worse than a sound phobic dog and it's, it's very common. It is, if your dog has sound phobias, don't do any of this like, oh, it'll be all right. That tone, is basically telling the dog that, no, it's not going to be all right. You should be freaked out. Don't ever console a dog that's freaked out about anything like that. It makes it worse. So we're, we're testing her for this. And, you know, we really, we, we want to be able to use the dummy launcher with her and Ike. So um, at, the, at the very least, if, if a dog comes here and I know, I know that the people shoot firearms, I'm going to test the dog and see see how it is and many times i'll just do this with house dogs just to find out if they're going to be sound phobic like when they hear thunder thunder those thunder shirts do not work that is not going to be helpful okay you can cure the dog that has the sound phobia but you're not going to do it with a thunder shirt you know what people say about those thunder shirts is oh the dog shakes less so mila sit no Sit! Get back up there! She heard her name and uh, will release the dog with its name. So she was sort of doing the right thing. I stopped her and she stopped, you know, and was waiting. But we want to make sure that the dog is on the play circle. That's going to help the dog. Sit! That's good. So I didn't see shyness. I didn't see like a uh, fearfulness. What I saw was uh, a real excited dog jumping out of position, which the position was sit with Mila. So what we did was I used it again, but I put her in a high collar next to the barn and then she wasn't showing any signs of anything. Um, 
right? So we didn't want to leave it on that note. Now we're back out in the field later. We, we let her calm down and we're back out here about an hour later and we're going to use the dummy launcher again. Now the other thing that we'll do to acclimate the dog to the sound, the report of the dummy launcher or to sounds in general is we'll use another dog. We'll make sure that Mila, Mila's tied up in a high collar over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to step out in front of the dog. And by the way, it makes less sound when the dummy's on it. Okay, so we already tested her from about 30 feet with this thing off of it. It's much louder. So now we're going to do some retrieves with Tonka. And she'll see that if she maintains, you get to do something fun. Tonka, here. It's a maniac. Tonka is. Tonka, here. Tonka, no, back here. Whoa. No, whoa, whoa. Good, good girl. See how she was nervous before she knew I was going to do it. She's still a little excited, a little nervous, but, you know, she's all right. Mila, sit. No, sit. Come. See how she's acting? See how she's just sitting? She's starting to see that, you know, this is something that's going to be positive. And that's what we want her to see is that, like, you know, learning to put up with the sound. This sound is something good, you know. Tonka, here. No, here. Tonka's a fucking retard. He is. Come here, buddy. Now we're doing it differently. Now we're doing like a walking retrieve with the dummy launcher. That way, if there's any type of excitement, I can do leash flexing and tell the dog to be calm. I can also give the dog a correction that that's not the behavior that we want. We already did this in one session and she's acting normal. So with her, like every dog's different. Like some dogs you might make, uh, have the dog at a hundred feet or something and get the dog used to it, uh, the sound that way and get closer. But with her, it doesn't matter. She really wants to be next to us and involved in the action. And by using the dummy launcher with Ike and Tonka, she'll get, she'll see that it's something that she wants to do. And that Ike and Tonka don't act negatively around the dummy launcher. So she shouldn't respond like that either with the sound. So she's not, uh, she's already sort of acting much more normal. So we'll continue doing this for some sessions before we even involve her in a retrieve. For her to be involved in a retrieve, she has to, I mean, she has to stay in a sitting position or in woe. So she's not, she's never gonna go on a retrieve unless we're just throwing the dummy to her, which we've already done that too. We want her to understand that this smell of gunpowder and the bird feathers is something totally positive. So now we just do retrieves, but she's right next to me. Here, sit. I'll put her at sit, and then I step on the leash. She goes in the down position. Okay. Well, she, she's already going for the retrieve now. That's what we want. We don't want her to be freaked out. It's okay for her to get excited. This is totally new to her, but she, she can't. Uh, we don't want her to get a bunch of forward um, motion. We want her to stay uh, relatively calm and in the sit position. She's getting this. Here, down. Step on the leash. I, I'm stepping on the leash real close. No, down. Down. Okay. 
She's going on the retreat. She's trying to go on the retreat. That's why I'm stepping on the leash. She is not responding as a gun shy dog at this point. This has been a very short period of time to get the dog to see that this is nothing that she shouldn't like. And if you have if you have a dog that's sound phobic, you have to work with them. And if it's sound phobic to thunder, that's a problem because how often does it thunder? So you have to work with the dog. Like you look at the weather and if the weather says there's gonna be thunderstorms, get ready, you're gonna work with the dog. You have to do this or else the dog's in this state of like super excitement. Fear, all that shit, it's just, you know, lump that into one group of excitement. Hi, here. Now, I'm not making Ike stay or anything. I'm not. I'm just. I'm, this is all for her. You understand? We're we're out here. We're just using Ike, but he doesn't really have to uh, do anything other than go get it for me. There, see, she's not responding negatively now. Nothing. Nothing. She's fixed. She's fixed. Good girl. Good girl. And it's just like, it's the same drill as before. No, down. I just want her to get used to this. So we are teaching honoring while we're doing this. She wants to go on the retrieve at this point. This is just excitement. She is not staying at heel though. Sit, sit down. So on the next Tonka here. Heel, sit. Now this is gonna be louder. Great. She's looking great. Beautiful. Little movement, not bad. She's concentrating on Tonka. I'm not going to call Tonka back right now. She's got it. She knows what's making the noise. Here, heel. No! Sit! Good, that's good. No, whoa. Whoa. Good. Less than, it's been about 24 hours since I found out that Mila had gun shyness and she's already responding appropriately, meaning when she hears the guns shot, she needs to just stay in position and not go crazy, not get real excited. Even though that one of the dogs is going on the retrieves, and at times you see that when I release the dog, I'm not really releasing the dog, I'm just having the dog go get, get my shit right now. I'm just, you know, like fun bumpers I'm giving it. But when the dog goes to get the retrieve, you see this dog, Mila, the one that had gun shyness, she wants to go on the retrieve. She's popping out of sit going in the direction that the dog that's going on the retrieve is going. So that's what we want. We want her to see that using the dummy launcher is just a fun activity and she gets to hang out with other dogs and she gets to hang out with me and she gets to do retrieves. It's real easy. So if you have a gun shy dog, you could try like I did with the dog right next to me with a really small caliber gun, you know, and if the dog gets excited, Give it leash flexing or tell it no. That's important. If there's any type of fear state or a super excited state in your dog that you don't console the dog. It's very important that you tell the dog no. If you use a pleasing tone with the dog, like, oh, it'll be all right. What you're, what you're saying to the dog is like, be afraid. It's a positive tone. You want to give it a negative tone. No, don't do that. Do this. Sit. I hope this makes sense. 
Don't turn your dog into a freak by consoling it. It's a dog. It's nothing like a human being. A human being, you may try and explain things to. Like, no, there isn't a monster under your bed. Right? But with a dog, you don't. They're not cerebral like us. They aren't. They really don't. They respond. They don't ponder thought. So if they're, they're doing something inappropriate, tell them, no, don't do that. It's that simple. So we'll work with Mila and uh, Tonka and Ike some more. And I give Mila like three or four more days, something like that. And I'll have her to the point where she's itching to go on the retrieve at this point. You know, that's, that's what we want to see. We want to see a dog that wants to go on the retrieve, that doesn't care about the noise, that associates the noise with something fun. That's all it is. Your dog, when it, when it does that, when it's gunshot and everything, it's just like an extreme form of excitement. Tell it not to be that way. Use a leash. When they're puppies, when they're young and I'm feeding them, I'll take like a, a cast iron pan and a hammer and smack them together making a real loud pressure wave. That's the first thing that I sort of, you know, start habituating the dog to loud sounds. I do that when the dog's eating. I'm not classically conditioning the dog to that sound. I'm just sort of habituating the dog to a loud sound. You know, it was sort of easier to get her ungun shy it's no reflection upon Jupy. Jupy's awesome, and he's gonna get past this. Do you understand? It's just about me influencing Jupy a little bit more. That's it. He's fucking. He's fucking awesome. He's Jupy poopy. Jupy. It's a good boy. You are a good boy, dude. Get that garbage out of your eyes. I love this guy. Ah, I can squeeze him. You did good, Jup. I'm going to test Mila to make sure that she doesn't have any sound phobias, that she's gun shy. And the, the reason for this is, well, there's many reasons actually, but one, we want to start using the dummy launcher with her and Ike. Look at who's riding shotgun. That's fucking little Ikey. Say hello. Uh, it's me, it's Ike. And teaching honoring. So, and the other, the other thing is that her family has a place in the country, and I do believe that they do firearm sports. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to have a dog around firearms that you hadn't checked this out with. If you take a dog that's ever been around firearms and you shoot the gun, you know, a lot of times the dog will get so freaked out it takes off running and gets hit by a car or just gets lost. That's how freaked out they are. So one thing that you notice is I'm in a, I'm in a, a yard, a fenced in yard right now. And even if I wasn't in a fenced in yard, I'd have some kind of element of control where the dog was tied down. Now she's back there on a tire and she has a leash on and I also have an e-collar on her. I'm using a 22. This is a dummy launcher. It takes a 22 cartridge. And so it's not real loud. We're not even attempting the shotgun yet. So I'm gonna do it from way back here and then I'm gonna move up. I got four different cartridges and we'll see how she responds. Now I'm gonna warn her right before I do this, I'm gonna repeat the command, sit, right? Don't move dog. And then she'll start, you know, we'll, we'll use this and, and we'll just start working our way up. There's nothing worse than a sound phobic dog. And it's, it's very common. It is, if your dog has sound phobias, don't do any of this like, oh, it'll be all right. That tone is basically telling the dog that, no, it's not going to be all right. You should be freaked out. Don't ever console a dog that's freaked out about anything like that. It makes it worse. So we're, we're testing her for this. And, you know, we really, we, we want to be able to use the dummy launcher with her and Ike. So um, at, the, at the very least, if, if a dog comes here and I know, I know that the people shoot firearms, I'm going to test the dog and see see how it is and many times I'll just do this with 
house dogs just to find out if they're going to be sound phobic like when they hear thunder. Thunder, those thunder shirts do not work. That is not going to be helpful. Okay? You can cure the dog that has the sound phobia, but you're not going to do it with a thunder shirt. You know what people say about those thunder shirts is, oh, the dog shakes less. So, Mila, sit! No! Sit! Get back up there. She heard her name and uh, will release the dog with its name. So she was sort of doing the right thing. I stopped her and she stopped, you know, and was waiting. But we want to make sure that the dog is on the play circle. That's going to help the dog. Sit! That's good. What I saw was uh, a real excited dog jumping out of position, which the position was sit with Mila. So what we did was I used it again, but I put her in a high collar next to the barn and then she wasn't showing any signs of anything. Um, right. So we didn't want to leave it on that note. Now we're back out in the field later. We, we let her come down and we're back out here about an hour later. And we're going to use the dummy launcher again. Now, the other thing that we'll do to acclimate the dog to the sound, the report of the dummy launcher or to sounds in general, is we'll use another dog. We'll make sure that Mila, Mila's tied up in a high collar over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to step out in front of the dog. And by the way, it makes less sound when the dummy's on it. Okay, so we already tested her from about 30 feet with this thing off of it. It's much louder. So now we're going to do some retrieves with Tonka and she'll see that if she maintains, you get to do something fun. Tonka, here! It's a maniac. Tonka is. Tonka, here. Good, good girl. See how she was nervous before she knew I was going to do it. She's still a little excited, a little nervous, but you know, she's all right. Mila, sit. No, sit. Come. See how she's acting? See how she's just sitting? She's starting to see that you know, this is something that's going to be positive. And that's what we want her to see is that like, you know, learning to put up with the sound. This sound is something good, you know. Tonka, here. No, here. Tonka's a fucking retard. He is. Come here, buddy. Now we're doing it differently. Now we're doing like a walking retrieve with the dummy launcher. That way, if there's any type of excitement, I can do leash flexing and tell the dog to be calm. I can also give the dog a correction that that's not the behavior that we want. We already did this in one session and she's acting normal. So with her, like every dog's different. Like some dogs you might make, uh, have the dog at a hundred feet or something and get the dog used to it, uh, the sound that way and get closer but with her it doesn't matter she really wants to be next to us and involved in the action and by using the dummy launcher with Ike and Tonka she'll get she'll see that it's something that she wants to do and that Ike and Tonka don't act negatively around the dummy launcher so she shouldn't respond like that either with the sound so she's not uh she's already sort of acting much more normal. So we'll continue doing this.
for some sessions before we even involve her in a retrieve. For her to be involved in a retrieve, she has to, I mean, she has to stay in a sitting position or in woe. So she's not, she's never gonna go on a retrieve unless we're just throwing the dummy to her, which we've already done that too. We want her to understand that this smell of gunpowder and the bird feathers is something totally positive. So now we just do retrieves, but she's right next to me. Here, sit. I'll put her at sit, and then I step on the leash. She goes in the down position. Okay. Well, she, she's already going for the retrieve now. That's what we want. We don't want her to be freaked out. It's okay for her to get excited. This is totally new to her, but she she can't. Uh, we don't want her to get a bunch of forward um, motion. We want her to stay uh, relatively calm and in the sit position. She's getting this. Here, down. Step on the leash. I, I'm stepping on the leash real close. No, down. on the retrieve. She's trying to go on the retrieve. That's why I'm stepping on the leash. She is not responding as a gun-shy dog at this point. This has been a very short period of time to get the dog to see that this is nothing that she shouldn't like. And if you have if you have a dog that's sound phobic, you have to work with them. And if it's sound phobic to thunder, that's a problem because how often does it thunder? So you have to work with the dog. Like you look at the weather and if the weather says there's gonna be thunderstorms, get ready, you're gonna work with the dog. You have to do this or else the dog's in this state of like super excitement. Fear, all that shit, it's just, you know, lump that into one group of excitement. Ike, here. Drop. I'm not making Ike stay or anything. I'm not, I'm just, I'm, this is all for her. You understand? We're, we're out here, we're just using Ike, but he doesn't really have to uh, do anything other than go get it for me. There, see, she's not responding negatively now. Nothing, nothing. She's fixed, she's fixed. Good girl, good girl. And it's just like, it's the same drill as before. No, down. I just want her to get used to this. So we are teaching honoring while we're doing this. She wants to go on the retrieve at this point. This is just excitement. She is not staying at heel though. Sit, sit, down. So on the next Tonka here. Heel, sit. Now this is gonna be louder. It's great. She's looking great. Beautiful. Little movement, not bad. She's concentrating on Tonka. I'm not gonna call Tonka back right now. She's got it, she knows what's making the noise. Here, heel. No, sit. Good, that's good. No, whoa. Whoa. Good. Here. 
That's fucking less than, it's been about 24 hours since I found out that Mila had gun shyness and she's already responding appropriately, meaning when she hears the gun shot, she needs to just stay in position and not go crazy, not get real excited. Even though that one of the dogs is going on the retrieves, and at times you see that when I release the dog, I'm not really releasing the dog, I'm just having the dog go get, get my shit right now. I'm just, you know, like fun bumpers I'm giving it. But when the dog goes to get the retrieve, you see this dog, Mila, the one that had gun shyness, she wants to go on the retrieve. She's popping out of sit, going in the direction that the dog that's going on the retrieve is going. So that's what we want. We want her to see that using the dummy launcher is just a fun activity and she gets to hang out with other dogs and she gets to hang out with me and she gets to do retrieves. It's real easy. This is Camo and Camo has an aversion to, not an aversion, it's a little gun shyness, not bad. We'll move him past this. If I shoot a 22 starter pistol off in the house while he's eating, he will stop eating, right? But he's, he's in a crate. No, no. He's in a crate, so, you know, he doesn't gain any forward motion. He's not shaking or anything, but he stops eating. So we're going to move him past this, and we're going to do a couple things. We're going to keep firing the gun, which I just did, inside a glove to make it less. And I'll also fire it out here in the yard. I'll let Camo run around. And when Camo's not looking, I'm just gonna fire the gun inside my pocket and then call Camo to here. I'm gonna call him to me. Something, so, something like this. He's a good looking little dog, right? He's a good boy. I got him on a leash. He's out here and he's dragging a leash. So let me put the camera down and that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot the starter pistol in my pocket so it's sort of muffled and then I'm going to call Camo to me. He'll get past this. He's a good boy. He really is. Camo! Camo, here! Good boy. Good boy. going to the bathroom. We're not going to do it right now. We'll wait a sec. It's a good dog. He really is. Housebreaking's been going great with him. Re really good. He had an accident um, like the first the first 24 hours. He peed in the crate. He, did, he didn't really know what to do. You know, we take him outside and it just sort of stand around or look confused. So, uh, totally housebroken now. That's, that's key. Just keep taking the dog out, and sooner or later you're going to get success. You have to build on success. Okay, so, so he, he's peeing now. He just dumped, and then he peed. And then the goal is I want him to be back there not paying attention. I shoot the 22 in my pocket and call him to me. Camo! Look at little Camo. Hear me! Come on, Green Eggs and Hammy. You're cute, dude. You are cute. Hammer here. Good boy. Good boy. Nice. He acknowledged the shot, but as you see, he was not flipped out so much that he would not come when he was called. I'll move this dog past this. This dog is not going to be gun shy. There's no fucking way. Take your time. Build the dog up. You know, use the 22. Muffle the 22 at first if you have to. You know, don't go right to a 12 gauge. Charlie! Come on, buddy! Camo! Come on, guys. There you go. Good. Good boy. Good. Good boy. That's good, good. Good, here. Good boy, there you go. Much better. Much better. Using Charlie, what I'm doing is I'm using Charlie to distract Camo while I use the starter pistol. I want him to get used to this. I want him to get used to the gunshot. I use the glove to muffle it so that it's less intense. 
I will use it without the glove, but I'll be far away and point like this. If you have the gun and it's right down by the dog and you shoot it by its ear, it's louder than if you point it away like this. So you point it away like this, the pressure wave will disperse that way. If you shoot the gun inside, it's louder too. So if you're having, you know, too much excitement, whatever, when you're shooting the starter pistol, when you're trying to feed the dog, do it outside. You could even put a crate outside and use the starter pistol and you, you have that opportunity to back up outside. Inside it'll just kind of, you know, bounce around the walls, it'll be louder. So keep that in mind if you do have a dog that's showing gun shyness, muffle it, make it less, get the dog accustomed to the lesser sound before you build it up. And we won't even consider breaking out a shotgun until right about when Camo is going to leave. You know, we want to make sure that he can do a, a, a shotgun. I'll probably, you know, he has to do a 16 gauge or something like that. But Camo, Charlie, oh my God, look at these two. Come here, here, yeah, here, good, good boy, good boy. Good boy. Charlie. Camo. Come here, Camo. Good boy. Cammy. Is Charlie driving you crazy, Camo? Camo's, Camo's uh, a little athlete, but so is Charlie. Char Charlie's a little fat athlete. He's not, Charlie's not fat, don't get me wrong. He's just sort of like, <laughs> he's sort of like a roly poly, you know? Charlie, you little freak! Camo! Cammy! Come here, Camo. Hey. Charlie, you're like an alligator. Back it off. Put a leash on Charlie. Charlie's younger. More obnoxious. Aren't you, Charlie? Here, come on. Good. Good boy. The other thing that you want the, the dog to do is smell the gunpowder for sure. And if you're going to work the dog on a um, dummy launcher, that's really how they're finding it. This gunpowder smell is very strong. So if, if, you throw, if you throw the dummy launcher out there in tall grass or something, even if you put goose scent on it, the gunpowder might override the goose scent. Or it might be a combination of both. I'm not really sure. I don't, I don't know exactly how the dog smells. Camo. Yeah, see, he's staying around. It's just a, a, a little bit of a reaction still. But it really should. It should dissipate over time. He's doing much better. You could do retrieves with the glove. You could teach the dog. Camo, come here, here. Come here, buddy. Camo. Charlie, you're a nut. Charlie's not even slightly gun shy. That's the difference. When you start, when you first start getting the dog, get the dog accustomed to loud sounds. Just habituate him to it. That's it. You know, Charlie, from the time that he was nine weeks old, we're taking him underneath the train working them under the train. We were using the starter pistol early on. You know, real early when Charlie was eating, I'd, sh I'd shoot the thing. So Charlie just doesn't care. There's no problem with gun shyness. We'll get Camo to be compliant around a gunshot. It'll be about him staying at sit or at woe with a gunshot. Do you understand? You know, or doing retrieves. You know, proper retrieve, a gunshot, throw some, go get it. Camo, you're good looking, dude. It's a very nice dog, Camo is. Why would anybody throw away such a sweet dog? He's great looking. He's very friendly. He's typical pointer dog in that he's, uh, he's friendly, 
and he'll climb right up on you if you let him. Like, they sort of act like big lap dogs. Don't be confused. That's a dog being dominant, and that will con confuse the dog. So don't let the dog climb up in your lap. You know, the, the, owner, the owners usually just think, oh, the dog's being, you know, affectionate or something. No, your dog's being dominant. You don't have an aggressive dog, really, but if you watch these dogs that do this, they're sort of an aggression to them. They're really into it. You know, I'm going to climb on the human and get away with it because I'm cute. You think it's not true? I'll introduce you to Tonka. Tonka's extremely dominant. He's just, he's not aggressive, but he's dominant.